Whenever I consider the word chapel, I usually think of a rather small, intimate worship space. But look at this beautiful church. And this is called the Washington Chapel. What is the significance of this place? Why would they call it the Washington Chapel? Well, when you take a look at its location, it is overlooking Valley Forges Park from a beautiful, prominent point. You can see in the distance the rolling plains, and just through the trees, you can see the top of the Memorial Arch, if you look carefully. This chapel was built, and as you go into it, its stained glass windows are magnificent. They are. As you take time and study them, they tell the story of different parts of how Western culture developed and how the American story is there. And Washington, of course, has a prominent place. Telling the story of how Washington made an impact in the broader picture of America, this is extraordinary. A man of faith, a man of the church, remembering the heritage that he's part of can help to establish truth, change history, and preserve it for the future. And it is a wonderful experience to just walk into this chapel. And uh, I imagine for those who worship here that this is a very special place to them. Now you uh, mentioned a moment ago something about the memorial arch that you can see the top of. Now what is this memorial arch? But when you look at an arch in history, uh, normally an arch celebrates victory in battle. So you think of the Arch de Triomphe in Paris, right. or the Arch of Titus when he celebrated conquering Jerusalem and all of the cities that he invaded uh, in Roman antiquity. Here, there was no battle, <clears throat> no bullets, no fighting. The battle was against hunger and disappointment and despair and defeat. And so it is an arc of triumph, a triumph over the weakness of the human spirit. And what's amazing about that arc is that when you look at its architecture, it not only is celebrating a fuel victory, it has a way of kind of capturing the American flag in the distance and the way the sun might have passed from the early December to the June period. I think they've kind of lined it up in just such a way that the sun shines in a wonderful pattern. But more than that, when you look at the arch itself, you'll see as you get close to the bottom of the arch, it has biblical words coming from Revelation 7. It says, they shall neither hunger nor thirst anymore. And as a Bible student, you remember, that's those that have come out of great tribulation. That's right. So when that arch was built, they knew the Bible. They loved the Bible, and they said, Valley Forge is the great tribulation of the American story. And they've come out of it, and they've entered into a new blessing, not a place where people are hungering and thirsting, wondering if they'll even have a nation, but now a nation that has been raised up to lead the world with its hope and values. So there is triumph there, patriotic there triumph. And then when you go uh, to the top and you look, you'll see that on one side, it gives the dates of the encampment. On the other side, it has a quote from Washington. And that quote says, you cannot admire enough the soldiery for their faithfulness. In their starvation, in their nakedness, they have been loyal and faithful to the cause. Now I'm summarizing his words, but what he's saying is, I can't believe this army stayed together. Mm. So Washington in his own words is celebrating the heroism of his men. And then when you go into the arch and you look at its different symbols, you'll see some more fossiers. Remember oh, what we saw? You look we carefully. Talk, at the Washington statue. That's right. So the Republican image of the past is there. You'll see some of the, what we might call the Oxford type faces, you know, of smiling and frowning. This is a place like the mountains, a place of joy and a place of misery. And you see that. You'll have some great quotes from people who are celebrating the history there, but on the other side, it has the list of the generals that stood with Washington. And it's amazing as you look at their names, you see that they come from different countries around the world, committed to freedom. So you have English names, of course, like Washington, but you have a Scottish name like Knox. You have a name like Pulaski from Poland. You have the name Lafayette from France. You have the name of von Steuben from Germany. 
In other words, freedom fighters came together to create the freedom we have, and they're celebrated there. And then, difficult to see, but there they are, is the great seal on the front and back. And I think we've had a chance to tour this great seal and its symbolism. Yes. Well, there it is again, with eyes to see. Not everybody sees it. They walk by and hidden in plain sight. This victory, this coming out of great tribulation, bringing to people from all over the world, is because he has smiled on our undertakings. And that's why there's triumph, because divine providence has been at work. How wonderful to have a chapel that celebrates a leader who believed in, in God we trust, whose favorite doctrine was providence, who saw God sustain a ragtag army that was starving to death and lead them to victory. There's a reason to celebrate and thank God. And that's Amen. what this chapel does. Amen to that. And how wonderful to be able to remember these things in this beautiful pastoral setting, standing next to this magnificent church. Praise God.